you requested for me to do a video on seed oils. Seed oils are some of the worst fucking things your body can consume. If you choose seed oils, you're going to get sick and fat and unhealthy. The real issue with fried foods is not about this fat that's going to clog your artery. That's not the issue. Prior to this video, I was living a very happy life of an awareness that this was an issue. And as I was doing the video, I was sent into some kinds of red pill community pseudoscience hell. For those of you who are new here, my name is Clementina and I do nutrition and fitness content here on YouTube. I have a bachelor's degree in nutrition sciences and I recently graduated with my master's in food chemistry. We're going to be uncovering which oils might be bad for you, which mines might be better and what to buy the next time you're shopping for growth. Firstly, we're going to clarify what are seed oils exactly and which are the components in them that are of concern. The most common seed oils that you have heard of are soybean oil, canola oil, olive oil technically also falls very often into this category, although olives are not really seeds, also sesame oil, flaxseed oil, etc. As this introduction says, the omega-6 fatty acids are the primary component of these vegetable oils and are the one that that have been raised as a concern to public health. Here it's also emphasized that there has been a 1000 fold increase in US consumption of vegetable oils since the 1960s. Seed oils contain a large amount of omega-6 polyunsaturated fatty acids primarily in the form of linoleic acids. Unsaturated fatty acids have more than one double bond. Because of the presence of these multiple double bonds, they come in the form of a liquid and are less stable when exposed exposed to heat, oxygen and also light. The main argument behind seed oils being bad for you is that they promote inflammation. This is because linoleic acid, when consumed in excessive amounts, is converted to another fatty acid called arachidonic acid, which leads to the increased generation of pro-inflammatory compounds. This could also negatively impact other markers of inflammation and therefore contribute to the increased risks of a large variety of diseases. The most commonly mentioned ones is cardiovascular disease when talking about seed oils. Here it is important to note that that not all of the linoleic acid that you consume is automatically converted into arachidonic acid. This argument would pose a larger concern if you were consuming excessive amounts of linoleic acid with your diet. Another thing that poses a threat would be the imbalanced ratio of omega-6 to omega-3 fatty acids in your diet since an imbalance of their ratio would negatively influence the overall fatty acid metabolism in your body. Omega-3 fatty acids also undergo some conversion to the essential fatty acids EPA and DHA. These are the fatty acids that you see on the package label when you go and buy omega-3 supplements. An excessive intake of omega-6 fatty acids really shifts your fatty acid metabolism towards converting those and decrease the metabolism of the good omega-3 fatty acids. Acids. The converted linoleic acid, so arachidonic acid, is no stranger to the human body. Arachidonic acid is one of the essential fatty acids that you require for brain development as a fetus. It plays also a key role and since your body cannot generate arachidonic acid on its own, it needs to be intaken with the diet. The second key points are the compounds that are being generated from omega-6 fatty acids when you cook with them, so when you expose them to very high temperatures, primarily through Frying. Lipid oxidation is a very complex process. There are large amounts of compounds that are generated that have negative impacts on your health. One of those, just as an example, is the hydroxy nonenan. Studies have found that this compound could be involved in the development of neurodegenerative diseases such as Alzheimer's disease. This conclusion is not as straightforward since also the researchers here emphasize that omega-6 fatty acids do indeed have a therapeutic window, although it's quite narrow and their consumption should be limited to 0.4% of the total food energy per day. Another way that linoleic acids could be negatively influencing your health condition would be if it increases
increase the oxidation of LDL, so low density lipoprotein. Here in the introduction of this study, it is also emphasized that between 8 and 10 percent of the total daily calories for an average American comes through linoleic acid consumption. And this is more than 20 times more than what I previously mentioned, 0.4 percent, that should be the benchmark for linoleic acid consumption. But even here, the researchers noted that the views on this point are really conflicted. Generally, if you go on Google and you type in linoleic acid, seed oils, polyunsaturated fatty acids, you're going to see that actually the first things that come up are positive studies on the topic. Here, my main source of information would be the systematic review that covered the different ways the contents of seed oils might be actually good for you. And just for your information, reviews are on the higher end of quality evidence. There's a hierarchy of evidence. Just the fact that there is a study on a specific topic that proves somebody's point, it does not mean that this is automatically true. So why can seed oils actually be good for you? Seed oils contain a large amount of compounds that have been proven to have positive effects on humans. Some of those are essential, such as vitamin A and vitamin E. In university, when we were learning about vitamins, we were told that one of the primary reasons why most people do not have a vitamin E deficiency is through the high consumption of seed oils. Vitamin E is also relatively heat stable. The same cannot be said about vitamin A. Although it is present in some decent concentrations in some seed oils, there are also other compounds that deserve an honorable mention, such as phytosterols, since these have been found to bind to cholesterol and diminish its absorption in the human body. In the review, different types of positive influences are discussed, such as the anti-inflammatory properties of vegetable oils, very high emphasis on anti-inflammatory since this completely contradicts the point that most people make online when trying to prove that seed oils are bad for you. There are different types of seed oils that are discussed. Flaxseed oil stands out. This could be due to its high content in omega-3 fatty acids that are not contained in the rest of the seed oils. There have also been a good number of studies that suggest that consumption of seed oils might mediate cardiovascular risk. Some oils such as soybean oil, corn oil and pomegranate seed oil have also been investigated for their antioxidant properties. For you to be able to make an adequate choice of oil, you need to be familiar with some of the chemical properties of oils in general. Next time you go to the grocery store, look at the packaging of the oil. You're going to notice that some oils are sold in dark bottles, for instance extra virgin olive oil, while other oils are sold in transparent bottles, such as sunflower oil or canola oil. This is because seed oils are are not all equal. You have also noticed that extra virgin olive oil is a lot more pricey than basic sunflower oil or rapeseed oil because the extra virgin olive oil is unrefined and the other oils that I mentioned are refined. This means that they have undergone different processes before they made their way into the store. The unrefined oils such as extra virgin olive oil or there are also unrefined versions of flaxseed oil and sunflower rapeseed oil and so on are not subjected to any temperature or chemical treatments to improve their preservation. They are only allowed to undergo physical treatment as a part of their processing to make them more stable. Refined oils on the other hand, undergo numerous processes such as chemical treatments, also temperature treatments, to improve their stability over a longer period of time. Unrefined oils, therefore, contain more of the positive compounds, and, un and refined oils would contain less of those since they have been purified with more steps. Unrefined oils are not to be subjected to heat, oxygen, or sunlight, since this can negatively influence their properties. So why is this important for you when you choose your cooking oil? There are two main things that you could take into account when choosing a suitable oil for you. You might divide the oils into groups, ones that are more suitable for cooking and ones that are more suitable for usage in cold meals such as salads. The ones that are more suitable for you when you decide to cook with them would be the refined oils. They do not contain large concentrations of all of these positive compounds such as vitamins and phytosterols, phenolics and so on, but no 
excessively large amounts of those fat oxidation products would be generated. Refined and unrefined oils also have different regulations that they need to adhere to. I know that, for instance, Paul Saladino talks a lot about the peroxidation index. The maximum peroxidation index for refined and unrefined oils is also different. Not all seed oils are equally unstable. The peroxidation index here, for instance, for olive oil classification for refined oils would be much lower than the maximum amount for the unrefined, hot pressed, extra virgin olive oil. A lower peroxidation index would mean that there is a lower incidence of peroxidation product. If you decide to make yourself a salad, a cold meal, I would suggest going for an unrefined oil since in this form they contain more vitamins, more phenolic compounds and also generally taste better. Since there is not enough information online on the peroxidation indexes, I found a very good table that lists all of their smoking points and since there is a similar correlation here, you can use this as a guideline for choosing which oil is suitable for cooking at high temperatures and which oils are not so good. As you can see here, refined olive oil has a smoking point between 200 and 243 degrees, while extra virgin olive oil has a smoking point of 190 degrees Celsius. Another good choice besides extra virgin olive oil for salads and cold meals would be flaxseed oil, since it contains larger amounts of omega-3 fatty acids. And on the topic of the ratio between omega-6 and omega-3, the research here is also not as definite as you might think. I found one study that went over the different negative implications and imbalanced ratio. It also explained that omega-3 fatty acids in higher amounts would be a good strategy to reduce inflammation, reduce the risk of allergies and also autoimmune reactions. However, this study was funded by a company that, that produced omega-3 supplements. This is why I would take this with a grain of salt. And since the people that discredit seed oils as a proper cooking oil promote animal fats as a substitute and really focus on the argument that animal fats are higher in saturated fatty acids, which are more stable and so on. Saturated fatty acids used to be a very controversial topic. In the early 2000s, evidence on saturated fatty acids has not been conclusive in defining whether they are actually neutral for your health or are they bad for your health in terms of the increase of cardiovascular disease risk and their role in the development of atherosclerosis. Saturated fats are also not all equal and factors such as their chain length might be crucial for their role in inflammation. Inflammation deserves a video on its own. It's become kind of a buzzword for things that are bad for you and I am not positive that everybody that uses these words actually is familiar with what it exactly is. On a final note, the oil that you are using for cooking or for salads should not be that of a great concern to you if you are not ingesting excessive amounts of it. I feel like the key takeaway for most of my videos is that everything is okay in moderation. However, if you want to really optimize your nutrition, your best choice would be to go for a refined oil when cooking and some unrefined oils such as extra virgin olive oil, flaxseed oil, etc. for salads just for you to be able to also reap the positive benefits of seed oils. Additionally, if you just are wondering with what kind of oil to deep fry your food, there are other concerns to be addressed here before worrying about what seed oils might be doing to your health. Your best choice would be not to consume deep fried foods as free frequently and choose other cooking methods in most of your meals. I personally go for a refined oil for cooking. Right now I have sunflower oil in my kitchen and I use extra virgin olive oil for my salads. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that you learned something new today and that I helped you not overthink your oil choices. Let me know down in the comments below if you would like me to do research on a specific topic next. I also now put my Fiverr link down in the description box since I am a nutritionist and if you want me to make a meal plan for you, you can go and check that out. Also, final note, now that we have better audio, I'm using an actual microphone and I hope that really improved the experience for everyone since I know that my camera audio was not the best. Thank you so much again for watching this video and I will be seeing you next time.